and welcome to Let's Fly VFR. Today we're heading out in X-Plane 12 to have a look at the VR performance and my first impressions, some graphic settings for you later in the video and uh, let's just see what we have. Now, you will find in a lot of the video I'm going to have the performance up in the top left hand corner for you so you can compare as we go through different regions from uh, primarily just in cockpit I haven't worried about the external views because really I don't care about them, but I've put them in for you to have a look. So let's take off from Kingsford Smith Airport in uh, Sydney and we'll take a quick jolly over the countryside, around the city, maybe even under the Harbour Bridge. Let's do that. And uh, around and then back again. Just have a look at the general performance. One thing that does frustrate me at the moment with both X-Plane 12 and Microsoft Flight Simulator is the fact that I can't get super, super clear visuals in VR. Um, it's not bad, it's it's not bad, but um, with the recent update of DCS to 2.8, where it's uh, taken on Vulkan as its core uh, API, man, that is beautiful. It is just beautiful. The clouds are beautiful. Everything works well. As uh, just having a bit of play with the uh, manipulators and just what he can have done. You know, I got a, got a little lost on trying to put the uh, the visor down. But yeah, the um, DCS just it's just crystal, crystal, crystal clear. And going through the clouds and stuff is just beautiful. Just the transitions are just lovely. And uh, I, I currently think the DCS, as far as its graphics. Uh, and atmospherics is certainly ahead of um, of both the current GA sims as we fly up the coastline a little bit, heading towards uh, to the harbour, which is directly ahead there. Isn't the um, the textures pretty nice in this Cirrus SR22? This is the uh, default aircraft, guys, that uh, comes with X-Plane 12. If you haven't uh, taken the this jump in yet, so let's have a look at uh, down the back. Seats look pretty good, don't they? If you're going to be a passenger in this aircraft, it'd be really nice. I don't know whether how practical it is or whether anybody would want to do it, but um, it would be nice uh, not so much multiplayer and be able to sit there and do nothing while someone else flies the plane. I reckon that'd be pretty boring. None of us would probably want to do that. We all want to be the captain. But um, it would be nice if there was some decent quality uh, passengers with us because when we look from the outside as we go zipping past and uh, flying up over the Sydney Harbour Bridge you can see the Vulcan uh, frames are really quite low and to be honest I had no clue about this it wasn't really until I was editing this video that I saw how low they were and I'm pretty surprised because the in-game experience was actually pretty good um, stuttering or anything like that uh, not really a big issue. Um, looking at the side of the wing as we come down underneath the Sydney Harbour Bridge, um, that you know that often gives you micro stutters, especially as you roll and you're looking sideways. It takes a bit more for the system to to manage that. And also, you might take note of the amount of VRAM here. I'm running this in um, in DSR. So I'm at uh, at the 4K DSR, uh, and I'm still not sure where that's the, the right way to go. Um, being that the visuals I get back in DCS are just beautiful, and that's set at 1080p. So I think I've got to have a look at that one and just see what it's got and the settings there and see if there's anything that translates back to the other sims, because at the moment um, it's just not comparable. Uh, the scenery is, you know, it's pretty decent. It's um, it's X-Plane scenery, obviously. Uh, we're not looking to get Microsoft Flight Simulator level uh, ground scenery here. Uh, that was something that was never promised to us. You know, it was going to be updated and different buildings and all that sort of stuff. You know, and this train. So I think we'll spot some trains and stuff running around the city at some stage. Now uh, there's plenty of vehicles going around. So look, it looks alive. And for me. And, oh, here we go. Now, here's the uh, <laughs> the trains running around the city in Sydney. Um, that's not bad. And we got sets going both directions here as we zip down across there. And I think you might have bumped into a tree there. Oops. Uh, but again, now you're not seeing any black 
lines on the edge and I have just got this zoomed in guys I've just taken the um, the raw footage and just zoomed it in so it fits the screen so the quality may not be as as good as it should be um, if it's left in a, just a little narrow window um, it looks very good to be honest um, I think you'd be pretty happy with it uh, in, but again it's down maybe to the headset but again DCS world it's just beautiful and I'm doing a few more videos with DCS world guys and because uh, I just love the combat I just love it it's just just makes me warm and fuzzy as we do a, a low G turn around the corner here in our uh, SR22 back across but the point of this was just to show you you know when you turn and roll and move around the smoothness and look I just can't believe that's 15 or 16 FPS being displayed there because it felt what well, normally about you get that feeling of 25 so here's my settings at the moment so we texture quality you see, I can't go higher than that on especially setting it at 4k even though it's DSR clouds are max because you got to shadow quality you don't really care uh, aircraft only is fine at the moment render distance got that maxed out world object density is pretty that's okay vegetation uh, not so bothered about that anastrophic filtering can't really see why it needs to be on or off doesn't really work i would like some more anti-aliasing the two times msaa would be better at four but um, it just merges the system at the moment and uh, i've tried the fsr just not really happy with it it just t just takes the quality away too much to make it really worthwhile and this guy's oculus tray in vr i don't know what i think it's the adaptive gpu scaling that seems to make a difference because if I fly without it, there's a big difference in uh, in what's delivered. And if you put on adaptive GPU scaling in Windows 10, it doesn't seem to do anything. It doesn't really seem to do what the Oculus Tray Tool version of it does. So whether you have it as high at 1.6 or do as far as the resolution side of things, it doesn't seem to make a huge difference as we coming in to uh, turn right base and land here at uh, Kingsford Smith so look my impressions of VR is it's, it's obviously got a fair bit to go and yes we're at beta 14 beta 14 guys so um, it's still got a lot of performance stuff to happen I'm sure between now and when it gets released and I'm sure that'll as always be ongoing as we come into touchdown so how are you finding it have you purchased x-plane 12 yet have you got the beta uh are you enjoying it are you disappointed are you liking it um, because all these sims give you different things and it really depends on what you're looking for on what's going to make you happy as we roll out at the end here so as always if you like the video it's informative like subscribe share with your friends if you if there's anyone of interest and i'll see you back here at x let's fly vfr again real soon see you then bye bye